If you guys are interested in getting a hand on this fantastic model and practicing texturing yourself and following along with this little mini tutorial, I suggest you download and donate to the 3D Artist Coloring Book. I'll leave a link in the description. Donors will get the full premium model for free for life when it comes out. And this is a dramatically, dramatically reduced price. This is the cheapest way to get it by far and it's never going on sale. So I'll leave a link in the description guys. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, I know it's been a while and I just uh, I've been so busy with the 3D Artist Coloring Book. I haven't made a video in a while, so I just wanted to show you guys uh, some cool little tricks I've picked up this week when it comes to creating stylized wood material. Uh, and I want to show you some cool little tricks you can use to get some nice little color variation on a flat plane when you don't have lights to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I change the environment map to something a little softer and with neutral color. So now we've got the true color and that's not being affected by the lights. So let's go ahead and add our base. And we'll call it base color. And just remember to make sure the roughness is all the way to one. And let's choose a nice dark brown with a lot of reds in there. That'll be good for now. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add two to three layers of color variation. And there's a cool way you can do that by adding a black mask to your fill layer and then adding a fill. And what we're gonna do from here is since we're using a black mask and we're now filling it in, we can use grunge maps to add color variations. So just for an example, let's go ahead with this one and we'll add that to the grayscale. So now you can see we've got the grunge map is actually generating the color. So from here we can mess with the color a bit, we'll turn off everything, and then let's change it to a color, let's say that's just slightly darker, a slightly darker orange. It's too yellow, I'm just trying to get it perfect. Slightly darker, just like that. And already we've got some cool color variation. You can see it's got some, we've got some staining in the wood and it's added a nice directional stain to it. And so, and that one actually works out really well. So you can play with this quite a bit. Now I'm gonna call this fill layer one, or let's call it color variation one. And let's go ahead and duplicate it, copy and paste, name it two. And then we're gonna try it again with a different one and maybe a lighter color this time. So let's turn this up quite a bit, maybe add some red to it just like that, and we're gonna change the grunge map. Um, I'm just picking random grunge maps at this point. Something like this would probably look pretty cool. So now you can see we've got these cool orange streaks going through the wood along with the staining as well. Now, what I typically do is, here's another trick, is that I add a filter to this one, and I'm going to directional blur it just like this just so it starts blurring. So I blur it top to bottom. So it starts creating almost like a grain effect. And we'll see if you can see the effect here. It's not very strong. So what I'll do is I'm gonna change this all the way to white so we can see exactly what's going on first. And then we can mess with the color blur or the directional blur. So you can see it's blurring it off to this angle. So let's straighten it out. So it's pointing directly straight up. And this color map, or this grunge map, isn't really going to work. So let's see if we can grab another one, but we'll keep the blur and the effects. Maybe something, we'll keep something, we'll keep it just as gray. Let's add it into here. That's a lot better. So now we've got some directional blur, or maybe even something like this. A little too strong. So that was super white and black. Let's go for something that's more of a like a light gray. Something that doesn't take up too much spot, too much space. Maybe we can, yeah, we can blur some. Perfect, do something just like that. So let's change the directional blur intensity to about here. 
And we'll change the color back. We can use the color picker to, to get a pretty close guess. And then we can add some more orange to it. Maybe a little red as well, just to darken it a bit. And just like that, you've got a pretty cool looking, oops, got a pretty cool looking map that almost has like a directional blur to it with some staining as well. Now, obviously you can change this as much as you want. Um, this is just a quick one and I, this isn't the, this isn't perfect in my opinion. I think I have a long way to go with this. I'm just showing you how it works. So if you want, you can even add a third color variation, make it, maybe even make it even lighter and add some yellows. So let's add some more yellow to it. And this one's gonna be a little more subtle, but let's grab a, another grunge map and see what we can do with it. Let's make it a nice light grunge map. Something like some spots and we can directional blur the spots just like that. So that's pretty cool. And that's some cool natural grain we have there. And we can kind of work with this a little bit just to get some cool color variation. That actually looks pretty good. Um, we're going to change it to overlay and you can see the difference right there. Pretty cool. Now, if you really want, what I might do is I just keep it in normal and then I don't know, maybe drop the opacity just a little bit. So you only can see the stains or see the grain like very subtly poking through. And that looks pretty good to me. Now the stain here is pretty powerful. So I turn that back. And what you can also do to each one is add a level to each color variation. So you have further control over it. So now we have full control. And what I typically do is just pull back and pull forward of the middle control here and mess around with it to see if I can get a cool, some cool effects. But this seems okay to me right now. And let's get some more, pull back some color variation there. Yeah, so we didn't have to change very much there. Now to add on to this, um, this isn't completely done yet. And there is quite a bit I would change. But again, this is just a quick demonstration. Let's go ahead and add some curvature. So I'm gonna keep this white for now. Add a black mask and let's create a, a, um, a mask editor generator. And you can see it's kind of starting to pick up the curvature of the um, curvature of the wood. So I'm gonna pull this all the way back so it only really affects the curves or the bevels of the wood itself. So let's go ahead and get that color dialed in for this edgeware. So let's call this edgeware. Wedgeware, doesn't matter. And I'm going to turn off everything except color. And let's make this, I do like this one. And then we can just typically pull back on, give it a little more orange. Yeah, just like that. And we could even change the base color if we wanted. Ah, uh, there it was. That's why I wasn't looking right. So I had the roughness turned on for the, um, oh no, I had it on one. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. So for here, we can go ahead and add a level as well. And we can change it however we want. I do kind of like it at one, personally. I don't think we need to mess with the values too much. Maybe we can add a little more orange to it. But to be honest, I don't mind it the way it is here right now. So that's great. We've got some edge wear, which we can now manipulate as much as we want. Um, we can also add one more thing that I really want to add is some ambient occlusion. And then let's call this done for now. So let's go ahead, turn this new fill layer all the way to black and turn off everything. And we're going to add a black mask here. And we're just going to add a simple generator called the dirt generator. One of my favorites. And now this is start to build in, built in some real good ambient occlusion. And then all you have to do is pull it using the 2D map. You can see much better how it affects it. You can just start pulling in the effect a little bit, just so it starts filling in the cracks very, very subtly. Anything more, I wouldn't really recommend at this point. But that's pretty much it, guys. There's um, not much else to it. 
I just wanted to show off some techniques. I'll be making a full tutorial video on this asset, by the way, um, which was created by Glenn Fox, and I'll leave a link in the description for him as well. When I do the tutorial, I'll probably have the colors and everything dialed in much better. Um, you may have seen on my Twitter that I was working with this quite a bit and got it pretty good, but then I lost my file. So I just wanted to show you guys quickly how to make some really, really cool color variation uh, very easily. And you can apply this to literally anything. And there's a few more tricks I haven't shown you with the grunge maps as well, but we'll get to that in another video, guys. Again, as always, this is Thomas from Stylized Station, and I will see you guys in the next video.